and gentlemen, it's the Big Jiu Jitsu Show, a member of the Pod Bros Podcasting Network. Go to podbros.com, check out some of the other shows they have. Uh, don't forget to go to bigjujitsu.com. There's an Amazon banner at the top. You're going to want to train with gear, so buy gear, but go through our page first, get some, uh, helps us out so I don't uh, have to mortgage my house 7,000 different times in order to pay for this podcast. So I'm Rob the Lord Humongous. And today I'm joined by two very special people. So first, we have the man who writes all the articles on our pages. And I say the, he's doing a pretty good job of the memes as well right now. If you uh, are currently listening to the podcast, you've probably seen one of the three different memes that he put up about Hoist Gracie or Kimbo Slice. So on our show, we have Jonathan. Yep, yep, yep. And Jonathan the man. Indeed. So also on our show today, we have our unpaid intern, huge pain in the butt. Matt. Oh, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. So, so I guess, love. yeah. So it's a we'll, nice pain in the ass. It's cool. That's true. So let's go ahead and uh, jump right into it because I know we were talking about it right before we started recording. This last Bellator event, what the hell happened? <laughs> what didn't happen is the question. <laughs> yeah. But UFC 200 has a lot of competition. Yeah. <laughs> what didn't happen was entertaining fights. Well, it's. <laughs> for for the hype that was built up between Kimbo and and uh, Dada Five Thousand, I was uh, kind of hoping for mo- a little bit more of a barn burner instead of you know just a really small gas tank fight. Yeah. You know, it, it, <laughs> what what it reminded me of was two fat old men out in a parking lot after a bar brawl over some hooker that they couldn't pick up, and one of them had a little too much to drink. Oh yeah, definitely. The, uh, the the last part of that fight where Dada Five Thousand was uh, on the cage and uh, came forward, I, they look like those hit, those hits look like they hurt, but at the same time, I was kind of like, Jesus, how how long has this fight been going on? Like five <laughs> years or some shit? Like this? Yeah, like- it felt forever, <laughs> dude. <laughs> I was like, we're gonna. Get, it's gonna be summertime by the time this fight ends, but. Next, the, the next fight I want to watch is Gabby Garcia versus Dada Five Thousand. And I think Gabby they have too. they have the same fighting style though. Just close your eyes and swing for the fucking fences, and that it seems to work for him. I guess I don't know. Yeah, but I'd like to think and, Gabby has a better gas tank than Dada Five Thousand does. Yeah, but Gabby I'm, also throws I'm, like I, freaking windmill punches. <laughs> yeah. I'm surprised Dada 5000 had the fucking energy to get to the ring. I mean, Jesus Christ. It well, looked like he was <laughs> asleep before he even stepped out there. Well, say in all fairness, it look, didn't look like he had the energy to walk out of the ring either, because they had to carry him out in a stretcher. <laughs> oh, like, oh my God. Yes, yeah, that's ridiculous, dude. Like, I mean, I hope he's all right, but but fuck, man. <laughs> you like, did that's you, bad. Real did bad. You, did you hear what they were saying before he walked out? Like, you know how they're hyping up the fight before the fighters walk out towards, like, the, the cage? That they're saying that Dada's two fights, his two opponents that he last fought, he's 2-0, and well, 2-1 and now, but the last two guys he fought before entering Bellator had a combined record of 1-16. and 16. Wow, that's, that's pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> Can you believe that? <laughs> I, mean, I had to rewind it just to hear that again, but it's right. 1-16. <laughs> and 16. That's, wow. <laughs> wow. Because did, did you guys watch the uh, documentary Dogfight? Yeah, I did. It was a good one. Jonathan, did and you I watch really it? did like it. Okay, I enjoyed the. I enjoyed Dada Five Thousand in that. I mean, he had a really good, you know, mindset, and you know, like he was really might actually be something. But well, what? I've been wrong before. <laughs> <laughs> you and me both. I was gonna say like. Yeah. Cause, Cause, in dogfight, they're hyping him up like uh, he fought somebody once and just fucked his face up real bad. Not him, but he fucked the other guy's face up so bad, so he doesn't want to fight anymore. And I'm like, shit, man, you know this might actually be uh be pretty good. To see him in the ring, and yeah, especially well, I was wrong. when they're like ex- expanding their history about him and Kimbo. I mean, that was pretty interesting too. But yeah, <laughs> I will say though, <laughs> they speaking, pro- speaking oh. of Kimbo, do you see that? You know, towards the end of it, Dada just kind of lays his arm over the back of Kimbo Slice and kind of holds it around his head like they're, you know, lovingly holding each other. And then Kim- Kimbo just kind of falls to his knees and 
And then Dada just falls over on his back like a dog waiting to have his belly scratched. And it, it just seemed like it was this motion constantly. It's like, okay, I'm going to lay down, Kimbo. All right, buddy. Rub my belly. <laughs> All right, belly. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I was going to say, well, I think it was way more entertaining than the fight itself between Kimbo and Dada 5000 was the press conference between Kimbo and Dada 5000 that happened uh, the day before. Did you guys see I that? that? Holy no, I shit. Didn't. So, I saw it. It was funny. <laughs> so pretty much the last five-minute exchange between Kimbo and Dada 5000 was eventually Kimbo stands up and says, I bet my nuts are bigger than yours and starts like undoing his pants. And they're like, no, my nuts are bigger than you. Like they're arguing about who, whose nuts are bigger. And there's uh, Kimbo undoing his pants and right like I'd say a good foot away from crotch level is Hoist Gracie. So Kimbo's <laughs> Kimbo's undoing his pants, talking about I'll show you, I'll show you my nuts are bigger, and Hoist is just laughing, but looking forward because I think he's uh he's like scared. I, I was like, I no, not scared, more like, dude, I don't want to turn around, there'd be nuts in my face. Because that's Dude. pretty much what would have happened if he might have, my man might have messed around and ended up with something in his ear if he was careful. <laughs> Hoist is like I've seen enough. Hoist is like I've seen enough papayas in Brazil. I don't want to see that shit. <laughs> but dude, uh, oh man, I, the uh, the Hoist uh, Shamrock fight though, like uh, I, Shamrock needs to no. stop. It's time for Shamrock <laughs> to stop. Just stop. Damn, dude. Honestly, they without offending a thousand people here i think they both need to stop <laughs> oh yeah it's it, it's i mean that was the whole point in the please stay tuned for voice gracie versus yeah. shamrock four now now i know like we we uh, had mentioned before that hoist has some tax issues going on and i'd really like to think that wasn't the reason he took this fight but i feel like if the irs was watching that fight they might let him get away with it yeah, yeah they're like wow uh, we feel bad for you man sorry <laughs> Sorry, dude. Uh, I didn't mean to pressure you. Um, we'll call it even. Just don't ever do that shit again. Yeah. <laughs> well, I was going to say, like, to me, I think Mike Hoist looked good for what he was doing. Shamrock, yeah. though, this has been how many fights in a row that he's just not lost, but have just, like, almost looked like he didn't even try. That nut shot was about six inches shy of – even brushing a breeze past the nut. I mean, well, the, Jesus Christ. If, if if you're just like, all right, I got to breathe. I'm going to dive and say that my nuts got hit. Well, that's the reason why they have cameras. I, the shot that I seen, the slow motion shot, where he got hit in the nut, quote unquote, um, that, then he bends over. Well, there was no way. <laughs> That there was a nut shot there. No, yeah. I didn't see it. Well, there was a nut shot first, though, like if because they did a review over and over again. But the it's uh, Ken's fault because he reacted too late. Like he didn't react fast enough. He was still in the fight, and then when he gets kneed in the head, you're right. He's like, "Oh my nuts, my nuts!" Like, yeah, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I, it's his fault. He reacted late. When they're doing the walk around, they're they got Hoist has got his arms over the edge of the cage, you know, and they're doing the review of the fight, you can hear Shamrock in the background, he hit me in the fucking nuts, man. Oh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, there's, I don't know. I think he took that shot to the head, and it fucking hurt. And that was the only thing that he could possibly think to do was grab his dick, because why not? <laughs> I mean, who's, who's to argue with it? Dude, I'm, I'm surprised Life Alert or Extends was not a proud sponsor of this <laughs> Bellator event. Oh my god! Or double AARP or whatever you call those things. A double. How about, how about AARP? There, guy. AARP. There you go. <laughs> Let me enjoy my retirement benefits, you asshole. It means I can go to, I can uh, get my ten percent off at KFC for senior citizens discount. And my hell yeah. And my fucking oil changes are half off, so I'm enjoying it. Hell yeah. <laughs> are you yeah, dude. Oh, all right. Fuck. Man, I think I'm gonna go to the nursing home today and just. See if I can recruit the next session of fighters for Bellator. <laughs> I think I really think Bellator is probably going to be reevaluating their uh, 
their fight cards. Like Hoy, I would have liked to have seen something different with Hoy. It's like if they could have gotten Sakuraba, I think that would have been a good one. But we that would have been what Sakuraba versus Hoist three. But I think just Shamrock was probably just easier to get. They're like, yeah, you want to fight? You want to try again? Oh, of course, you know those last like ten fights I've done since two thousand five, where I won two of them. Don't worry, yeah, it's okay. You know, honestly, I think the only Gracie fight for I mean, this is going to sound a little bit off, but the only Gracie that I think would still be interesting in the ring or in the cage or whatever the hell you want to call it um, is Hickson, man. I still think oh, yeah. that he'd come right out of the freaking woodwork and destroy anybody who comes in front of him. Uh, I, but, I agree that he would do that, but I really think Henzo would also uh, be able to get in there still. I think Henzo just suffer, has a lot of injuries still, though. Like yeah, right it, now? Henzo's hurt. He's, yeah, he's he's had so bad. many things broken, and I don't I don't know that his body would hold up. True. Well, yeah, his body's say, pretty deteriorated. So we could just see uh, Hicks and Gracie go four hundred and one and zero in uh yeah. in fights, but <laughs> but no, I mean it's like I think Hicks for for the old school guys because obviously you got Cron coming up, you got um some of the other Gracie's looking to do an MMA or currently in MMA. But I mean, like, you know, the last kind of last kind of generation of the Gracie's like, yeah, I can see Hickson still doing something. I really like to think Henzo would still be able to do something. That's just like, I want to see that happen. But I think Henzo could shut whoever down that he wanted. I don't think he would have to stand toe to toe with anybody. No, but I think with the, the amount of problems that he has had, I think it'll just, It'll do more damage than it will good, but I think he can shut people down. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I can, I can, I can at least agree with that then. But damn it, I still want oh, Penzo fought. I just want to see him just beat somebody's ass. <laughs> no, no, man. Fight pass. You, pride days. Just look it up. Wait, what yeah. do you mean fi- Pride days? Like he was still killing <laughs> it in Pride, man. Yeah, but so um. There was an interview that happened not too long ago. Am I killing your current events, Matt, or or what? Wait, what? Oh, I... no, you're good. Uh, okay. <laughs> what, what? Because I'm about to uh, talk about the Ronda Rousey interview. Oh, no, oh, you're good. <laughs> okay. Just making sure oh, I did. I did hear about that just this morning, actually. Whoa, what, what, just this <laughs> I morning? I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, okay, go on. I know what it is. It's about the comments. Yes, I heard about that. All right, so pretty much Ronda Rousey did an interview on TV. Was it the Ellen Show or something? I'm going to say yeah, Oprah. The Jenner. <laughs> was like Oprah. Three things. <laughs> yeah, the Ellen DeGeneres Show talking about how, uh, what was it? She got knocked out. And she I, I was in the hospital and, and, and I just wanted to kill myself because I suck now because everybody thinks it thinks nothing of me. That's about it. Yeah. Well, that was a great impersonation. <laughs> <laughs> well, my whole thing is like, we'll back this up. Suicide, big deal. <laughs> Suicide is a very big deal. And, you oh, know, yeah. like, yep. you know, my stance, you know, like being in the military, the whole uh, mi- people supporting Mission 22, 22 veteran suicides a day. Not something to joke about, right? So, with that being said, I think Travis Brown's sitting at home right now because she did say something that would, you know, the, the whole don't stick your dick in crazy, blah, 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 that whole thing. Awful advice, first of all, because that's it's not fun. Second of all, she said, uh, I looked up and I saw my man and I knew I had to have his babies or something like that. I was like, Jesus Shit. Christ, this woman is crazy. Damn. And I'm sure Travis Brown was like, what the fuck have I done? What have <laughs> I done? I'm, I'm pretty sure he probably ended it as soon as that interview was over. <laughs> like, hey, uh, you know, that's really good. Glad, babe, I'm glad you got your, you know, your emotions out, your feelings. Um, I think we're not going to be working out. You know, I just, it's not me, it's you. <laughs> he's like, he's probably like the model chick I beat up. Or she wants to get back with me. Allegedly, so, uh... <laughs> allegedly, don't get, hey man, people are actually recognizing us so we can get sued. So allegedly. <laughs> allegedly. allegedly. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. But uh, I can't believe she said that. Oh, it was, it was wild. Like, I think she's, but then, um, 
it's funny because she was also saying like, well, people on the internet are so mean. And I immediately think back, like all you've done for a good while is just talk shit about the people you're fighting and not even like, uh, I'm going to go in there and beat them. It's like, you know, what is it called? Holly Holmes, some fake ass bitch or something like that. Yeah. Fake, Do nothing, bitch. Yeah. Fake preacher's daughter or something like that. And you know, it, backfired on her i mean you can try to go the conor mcgregor route but like conor mcgregor is the master of that you can't just be evil and spiteful i guess like you know what man holly holm would have gotten the same medicine though if she would have lost and uh, that's something ronda needs to realize is that all her past opponents that she's beaten like from besh kohea kat zagano misha tate Dude, they've all made crazy memes about their losses. The internet was bashing them and shit. Like, you know what I mean? Like, she can't be crying over something like this, dude. Like, it's... I don't know. Yeah, like that one of... uh, Like, Betch did say some fucked up stuff. Yeah, she but, did. Um, yeah, you're right. About her dad, I think, right? Yeah, because her... It's the same thing. I her dad... See, can... and that's, that's the bullshit that I... That pisses me off, is that supposedly she says this shit about her dad, who committed suicide. Who committed suicide? Um, and this pisses Ronda Rousey off. So much so that after she gets her ass handed to her in a basket, she's going to say, I'm sitting in the hospital and thinking about killing myself. What the fuck are you doing? I mean, there's there's two different lines there. Whenever you're going to get all defensive about someone talking about someone's suicide, and then wait until after you get your ass beat and tell everybody that you want to commit suicide. Uh, there's two, that's not right. I mean, that alone is just all publicity. She needs some fucking money, and she wanted to raise someone's hairs. Yeah, well, it worked because a lot of people are kind of not really accepting it. They're like, eh, nah, nah, no. bullshit, nah. Yeah, dude. Like, what I saw like this meme where. Uh... <clears throat> where it's her crying, you know, it's an interview. I saw it this morning and it's of, and it goes back to, it's like the reason I won't forgive Rhonda is because one, she never shook Misha's hand after the fight. Uh, yeah. what was it? Two, she fucking, yeah, she was flipping off Misha when they were doing that rock climbing thing in the ultimate fighter and uh, just some other numerous things that she's done. But yeah, I mean, it's crazy. Yeah. It's yeah. It just, I, I think it's kind of like getting a taste of your own medicine. Yeah. You get talk shit, get hit. That's all it is. That's exactly what it is. It's k- karma. I mean, you can't be that way for that long and not get anything back. No, not at all. So let's let's move on topics because I feel like we've done enough shit talking to Bellator. We've done enough shit talking about uh, Ronda Rousey. I'd like to talk about some training experiences I had this week. Though. Oh, <laughs> Cause, yeah. Because yeah. um, I know our student or my students are listening right now. Uh, cause oh. they're like, Oh, you do a podcast. This is a while back. I said, yes, absolutely. And then they started listening to it. So I got to talk about them. So <laughs> Eddie, who's a white belt at, um, the gym and Kaiser slaughtering got, okay. Well, let me back up this whole story. I do this a lot. I just want to tell the whole thing, get the setup. Like maybe I'm a really shitty storyteller. I don't know. But, um, <laughs> no, you're good, man. You're good. So this past, you gotta- do what? Quit sucking uh, up, Matt. Yeah. Oh, you're good. You're good. We work no, for free, was, man. Gonna, you ain't gonna hey, get any more pay say, out of this. Hey, I was gonna say you gotta do that. You gotta backtrack like that Quentin Tarantino screenplay stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, my life is. A, actually, I, I take it back. I'm glad my life is not a Quentin Tarantino movie because it'd be all sorts of <laughs> fucked up. But, uh, but, <laughs> but um, cool. so so we had class on Thursday, and um, one of the guys I train out here in Wiesbaden, Will, came with me. And we're like, hey, you know, we got, say we had five people rolling, which is great, you know, good, good old fashioned jujitsu, hardcore time. And uh, during one of the rolls, Matt accident, or um, not Matt, uh, Will, Will accidentally caught Brian with a knee in the mouth. And Brian, nice. Brian is, um, Brian's relatively new to jujitsu. And first of all, I've never seen this dude complain about anything like, um, Aside from the one time he's like, yeah, I think my ribs are bruised and I probably should take a week off. And I'm like, oh, yeah, it's probably a good idea <laughs> to do that. So he got hit and um, he rolled over on his uh, knees and held his held his uh, hands over his mouth. 
sits up and there's just blood like pouring out of his mouth. Oh damn! Yeah, so I'm like, Will is sitting there like uh, with his mouth open, almost frozen. Like I, I didn't mean to do it, and you know, like hey, you know, it's it happens. It's yeah, it's an accident, happens, yeah. right? Well, it knocked two of uh, Brian's teeth loose and pulled them forward. <laughs> so, so I'm like cleaning out his mouth. The bleeding stopped. So I was like, that's probably a good sign. And oh, and uh, he went to the dentist, and his message said like he, the uh, orthodontist thinks he'll be fine. But if anything, they'll just uh, hit him with a root canal, so it shouldn't be too bad. Oh, and then uh, the dentist said, uh, "Try to you should, uh, we should have tried to push them back into place." I told him like after the injury, I was like, "Dude, teeth freak me out. I'm not t- like I don't want you to mess with that." So, <laughs> no. so I read that. I got like you know my stomach kind of did like that weird like twist. <laughs> I'm like, ugh, think about pushing somebody's teeth back into place. So, anyways, while I'm helping uh, Brian clean up and checking it out, somebody says. Rob, Rob, you know, trying to get my attention. I look over and Eddie is on the mat on his back, like not moving. And I'm like, oh shit, what happened? He's like, well, I was choking him and he didn't tap. <laughs> oh oh nice. Lord. <laughs> so fucking, so fucking Eddie gets put unconscious. And uh, I'm like, man, this is how much time we got left in class. Oh, 45 minutes. That's great. So let's keep it. What else can happen tonight? I would never make that statement. No, well, I didn't. The, <laughs> what else can happen? Ow! <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, well, I didn't. Good I didn't Lord. say that out loud. But um, <laughs> what was good was it took like you know five minutes to get Eddie woken up, and uh, Sam, the guy who uh, owns the gym, he was like, "It's okay. That's martial arts." I'm like, "Yeah, I guess it is well, martial arts." But yeah, did, that, did he just not tap because he was being stubborn, or did he not tap because he didn't feel like he was being choked? Uh, he said, uh, I talked to him, he asked me, he's like, have you ever been put out? I said, yeah, absolutely. He said, did you think you were going to get put out? I was like, nah, not the time. And, you know, when I woke up and realized I got put out, so he's like, I think it was kind of the same thing. I didn't think I was going to get put out, but. Well, I mean, I know I'm pretty sure most of us, just about anybody who's listening to this podcast has had that stubborn trading partner that just wouldn't tap. That Mm -hmm. they're like, all right, so. Who cares if I go to sleep? Maybe I can get out in that last second. But, you know, I, I just, I don't understand that. You, how many brain cells does a person lose every time they get put to sleep? I honestly don't think it's that many. Like, I think I'd, I'd be more worried about getting hit in the head than I would yeah. be just put, getting put to sleep. Well, That's an interesting question, actually. We should probably look that up. Concussions, yeah. man. Like, it's bad. Like, how many, how, uh, what type of damage you can do to yourself? just uh getting choked unconscious well i mean because whenever you get choked it's lack of blood supply to your brain yeah i myself have not been put to sleep but i'm not afraid of tapping i'll tap i don't care if it starts to i have been close i mean i've seen birdies but um i've not been choked out but uh, it doesn't mean that much to me <laughs> oh no yeah, no i mean t- I'm I'm all about tapping early. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, but, I mean, uh, it's uh like I'll shit. What the hell am I going with this? Look, I'm, I'm not afraid of tapping, but there are a couple times where I didn't think I was gonna be like put to sleep, but I was like, oh yeah, I'm good. And then just my buddy's you know shaking me like, hey, you good? And I'm like, oh fuck, I got uh I got put to sleep. That's crazy. Well, my. My uh, instructor, he does this variation of a cross collar choke, yeah. where instead of reaching your hand in palm up, you he just puts his thumb in the back side of your collar, and he just kind of puts a small amount of pressure and pulls on your opposite side lapel straight down. I mean, it's the slowest, most time consuming choke I've ever felt in my life, but it doesn't feel like you're going to sleep. And then that last second, you're like, oh crap. <laughs> you know, with a choke like that, I can understand. But a straight cross collar, you can feel that pressure. And a lot of times you can kind of feel yourself about to go to sleep. But I don't know. I just don't see it as being that important to try to fight your way out Yeah, to go to sleep. All right. So I looked it up. You guys ready for a pretty enthralling article? Or, uh, yes. All right. Here we go. The mechanics behind chokeouts 
are disputed. It has been explained as resulting from directly constraining blood flow to the brain. A competing theory involves compression of the baroreceptors of the carotid artery, confusing the body into thinking blood pressure has risen. Due to the baro the barrow reflex, this causes vasodilation or widening of the brain's blood vessels intended to relieve high pressure. Since no blood pressure increase has actually occurred, the dilation causes a dramatic decrease in blood pressure to the brain or braso or brain fuck, I can't even pronounce that word. Ischemia. Big fucking word. It's a big it's a medical term. However, let's <laughs> let's let's get to the most important part. Choke out should not be confused with erotic asphyxiation or the fainting game. <laughs> Oh shit! <laughs> and for Wikipedia's sake, let's read a uh, <clears throat> erotic asphyxiation. The sexual practice is variously called asphyxiophilia, autoerotic asphyxia, hypoxiphilia. The term autoerotic asphyxiation is used when the act is done by a person to themselves. David Carradine, uh, colloquially, a person engaging <laughs> in the Activity is sometimes called a gasper. <laughs> <laughs> the erotic interest in asphyxiation is classified as a paraphilia in the diagnosis, the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual of the American Psychiatric Association. So let's go back to the other one. Dangers. There is a debate over the dangers of chokeouts. After five or four to six minutes of sustained cerebral anoxia, permanent brain damage will begin to occur. So, but the long-term effects of a controlled chokeout for less than four minutes, as most are applied for mere seconds and released when the unconsciousness is achieved, are disputed. So they say it's never safe, even if it's minimal, causes some death of brain cells. There's always ah. risk of short-term memory loss, hemorrhage, and harm to the retina, concussions from falling when unconscious, stroke, seizures, permanent brain damage, coma, and even death. And to join your nearest jiu-jitsu studio, please call 1-800-GO-TO-SLEEP. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, no shit. <laughs> like, it's going to happen. Like, as long as you're not going to every class and uh, getting put to sleep. Four minutes, though, like, I'd hope after four minutes somebody realized that somebody's out. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, that shit would... Like, that's trust I, in your I partner. myself don't think I could hold a choke that long. I mean, it takes some... You know, especially a gi choke like that. It takes a little bit of grip strength to hold that. Four Just, minutes? Yeah, four minutes. Imagine? That's when you start getting like into real bad brain damage. But wow. that's that's <laughs> so now we can dispute all these uh, movies where the guy like puts a sleeper hold on people and they die in seconds or uh, yeah. crazy. You know, like, that's bullshit. That would never happen in jujitsu. <laughs> <laughs> I've said that before. My wife's like, Shh, <laughs> stop. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> damn so there you go listen ah, hear, that, your, hear that eddie bit of medical it. education yeah i know i'm not even a doctor i just i'm like that 18 year old kid who pretends to be one yeah dude it's not a shame to tap man yeah. <laughs> all right so matt what do you got rob the new doogie hauser yeah i'm a little too old to be doogie hauser i'm not quite as smart either so <laughs> all right matt so let's hear these events or uh current events or mma bjj and then just the fun one. What do you got for either of them? Oh, for the BJJ BJJ one? Yeah, let's hear it. All right, man. Uh, it's actually an opinion article from Bloody Elbow. It's talking about how uh, this new generation of fighters uh, were either getting really, really technical strikers in MMA. And uh, and it's talking about how grappling and jiu-jitsu is kind of deteriorating. And uh, this this guy, this... this uh, the author of the article, he's pretty much uh, saying that if grapplers really want to succeed in MMA, that they need to put like 100% of focus in grappling. They could train their striking, but if they really need to go to their bread and butter and not change up their game. You know what Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. I've been saying that since day one. If you yeah. try to change your game to fit the person you're fighting, you're going to lose. Yeah. Like, man, it's crazy. Like, he talks about, like, he compares guys to, like, for example, the Predators, who are like the very successful grapplers in MMA, would probably be Damian Maya. Even though Maya has focused on what his striking over the past couple fights, you know, he hasn't really looked too good. He even admitted that focusing on his striking made him a, a bad, uh, worse fighter than what he was, you know, starting out with his bread and butter grappling. So, yeah. I mean, 
I mean, that's what you, that's what it says. I mean, look at Ryan Hall. He did not throw one single punch in that tough fight. I mean, people might think, oh, that fight was shit, but no, dude, it was impressive in my opinion. I mean, he didn't come throw on. a punch or get hit by one. No, yeah, well, it was I mean, very, very impressive. Well, that's the type of stuff we need. Like for the jiu-jitsu community, that's the type of stuff we need. We need to see people with high level grappling. You know, there are some guys out there, but like Ryan Hall, he's just a straight jiu-jitsu guy who started doing MMA. And it, it, he's made like huge waves. You know how many people, like you said, uh, how many people you think are going to start running and doing a uh, jumping, rolling into heel hook position? Yeah, you know, <laughs> shenanigans. But the only exceptions they made about like a grappler that's complete everywhere is probably just Jacare, because man, Jacare is just slick on the ground. Jacare well, can be and, good at whatever he wants to. Actually, yeah, he's, he's just that. Type and to of rewind player. back to what we were talking about earlier, this Hoist Gracie and Kim Shamrock fight really hurt Jiu-Jitsu. What the people needed to see, for Jiu-Jitsu standpoint, was Jiu-Jitsu work. Instead, a submission. What? Yeah. Instead, what they seen was a bullshit whine because you took a hit to the face and no groundwork at all. That hurt jujitsu. I don't care what anybody says. Uh... If it, I mean, think about it. You got the, one of the very, well, the very first UFC champion out there fighting. What, and the very first representative, true, you know, United States representative of, um, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, and the part and the fight ends with a knee to the face and the hammer fist to the side of the head. That's uh, in my mind that hurt real bad. I think that um, maybe for the last like like you said the last generation, those of us who saw the first UFCs are like, oh shit, what's this crazy guy doing on the ground? That's wild. Uh-huh. Right. Like you know that's good for that, but I think Ryan Hall has the potential to be like Hoist. For this yeah, but look at the look at the amount of people that watch the Ryan Hall situation compared to how many people watch Boyce Gracie in his coming up years. It's completely different. I mean, whenever somebody sees anybody in fifty fifty, you can say that. If somebody's in fifty fifty, either in a jiu jitsu tournament or in an MMA match of any sort whatsoever, it's boring as shit. Ryan Hall did I mean, he pulled some shit out. I mean, I'm He's awesome at that, the leg game and all that stuff, you know. But yeah, as a norm, when somebody sees two guys sitting in 50-50 position, it's boring as hell. So I can I can say, yes, Ryan Hall did a whole lot of good for Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, because he did. But I can also say that he probably lost a lot of people, you know, that was watching that fight because they didn't see the technical ability that was within them. You know, what I think he would actually have to do, now that I think about it, he's going to have to beat somebody big with just jujitsu like that. Yes, like like Hoist did with Kimo. Exactly. There you go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Wait. I think if we need to get this generation's iteration of like a Hoist Gracie, Ryan Hall is going to – Ryan Hall needs to keep working. He's doing what he's supposed to, obviously. And uh, when he gets to that point and if he 50-50s, you know – Hell, I don't know. The first I mean, that's what this article stating too. I mean, that's they're saying that grappling is deteriorating. Like high level grappling is apparently deteriorating in, in high level MMA. So that's what because he's saying. Is like these... focus on Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, focus on grappling, mainly focus it's on the only thing that these fans want to see is a bunch of freaking people beating each other stupid. That's yeah. all they want to see. They don't want to see the technical aspect of fighting. All yeah. they want to see is some guy get his freaking teeth knocked down his throat. And and fall over like a drunk guy in a bar. I yeah, mean, in my yeah. opinion, securing a submission, dude, is the most technical, most artful work you'll ever see, dude. Like, I think it's fantastic. Absolutely. I think if, grappling, if MMA, it's stand up and walk away. That's amazing. I think yeah. there's a place for both. Absolutely. So, like, um, we'll say like the Robbie Lawler, uh, Roy McDonald fight. That was oh man bloodbath. <laughs> yeah, it was a bloodbath, but it wasn't two guys swinging for the fences. You no, know, right. It was extremely technical and it was beautiful. However, I also but because I like jujitsu, if I see these two guys have a straight up like grappling match in the in a, in the UFC where they're trying to punch each other at the same time, I'm going to be super excited. However, I get it because 
a lot of people have been conditioned to be like, oh, well, you know, these two guys just laying on the ground kissing. No, nah, who gives a <laughs> shit? Like, to me, he's controlling the fight. He's doing what he wants to, and he's going to win. So, yeah, that's why it's entertaining to me. But, but the majority of the MMA fans are just casual fans. They're, they're not people who train. Yeah. Yeah, they don't even know, like, what's going on, especially – you know, they don't know what positions are going on and stuff when the guy transitions to one position or another. Like, they don't know that. They just usually, they just want the fight standing up, just like Jonathan said. They want teeth being knocked out. Oh, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. And don't get me wrong. I love that, too. I like to see knockouts. Yeah. I love to see all that. Oh, but... I, but, I mean, like, if you ever have gone to, like, a Buffalo Wild Wings or Hooters or whatever, you know, insert local sports bar here and yeah. been there with the UFC on, it is hair pulling, like, like that's how frustrated I get. Like, I just want to rip all my hair out, and I got to hold on yeah, to yeah. all of it because I'm starting to lose it. But, you know, um, I remember who was it? It was I remember Matt Hughes was fighting. This is a long time ago, and this I can count on my hand how many times I've gone to one of these things out in public, and some guy was just <laughs> screaming arm triangle throughout the entire match. I mean, they're like standing moving back and forth and this asshole is screaming arm triangle arm <laughs> triangle i did talk to him afterwards because i was wearing my sweet team rock shirt plus Hell all yeah. the guys in north carolina and whoop, whoop. he came up he was like oh hey you, you know you train i'm like yeah you know i do a little jiu-jitsu a little muay thai he's like yeah man i'm actually going up to uh so-and-so to tra- try out for the ultimate fighter i'm like oh that's fucking awesome dude like where do you train it's like, well, I don't train. I I, uh, I teach myself in my garage. Like, dead serious. Oh, dead shit. fucking serious when he said this. Oh, well, c- good luck to you, my friend. Yeah, no shit. It's like, <laughs> oh, I train myself in my garage. I'm like, oh, okay, man. Like, you know, I remember starting in somebody's, the third floor of somebody's house. And, you know, he was a brown belt. So, whatever. It's like, you know, uh, have you had any fights? Like, what's your record? He's like, well, I'm zero and zero uh, amateur and pro, but... You know, I like to I like to fight people, you know, at parties and stuff. I'm like, that's sweet, man. Good luck to you. I wish you the best. And, you know, I don't – and that man's name, Stefan Bonner. <laughs> no, I'm joking. That's bullshit. Oh, I was like, oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, I'm, I'm, I'm lying, man. No, it, but that's seriously how the conversation goes. And, you know, that's probably one of the rare guys as well who's going to just – yeah, I saw UFC once or twice and blah, 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 and – you know, that's great. Like, there's you will occasionally run into people that are just full of shit as well. Oh, yeah. I call them the Napoleon Dynamites of MMA. <laughs> <laughs> you ever that's... take it over any sweet jumps? Yeah. No, there, I mean, you there's... Ever, you ever punch someone so hard if their butthole turned inside out? Uh, I did it once. <laughs> yes, that's amazing. No, there's a, there's a kid back home. So this kid, um, I'm going to save his name to protect him from trying to call me because he's gonna be like i know that guy anyways he um (laughs) we did taekwondo together and this also by the way our listeners out there if you know of a fake black belt who you think would do an awesome job on this show and get called out on the air send us a twitter message or a facebook (laughs) message we won't tell him who it was it sent him to it to or sent us to him but we will get them on the show we'll go as crazy as we can and then we'll just try to debunk them being a black belt now in all fairness <laughs> don't don't do something dickish like uh send me you know hicks and gracie's phone number or something like, <laughs> i think this guy's full of shit like okay <laughs> but um yeah if there's somebody out there you think would make be a great candidate for getting called out for being a fake black belt please message us either myself jonathan or sean we will answer it and we will st- we'll set this thing up Back right. to the story. Absolutely. Back to the story. So this kid does Taekwondo with us, right? He He's all right at it, right? His attitude is really shitty. So somehow there's some transition after I joined the Army from him being a Taekwondo instructor to him being a world-class MMA instructor. Right? How'd that happen? Yeah. I mean, like, no grappling experience, no Muay Thai experience, just Taekwondo. So what's funny was he talked about tr- teaching at Team Lloyd Irvin during 2011 to like 2000 whatever when he came back to North Carolina. 
I'm sitting there like, well, that would be weird because I would have seen him there because I was stationed up there at that time doing tournaments and training and whatnot. But right. So it's guys like that. I mean, they're going to be the ones that you know you're going to run into those guys occasionally, and they're going to be the ones that help feed this bullshit. Like, oh, you know, don't do that on the ground. Blah 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 blah. Whatever, man. I'm tired of it. Yeah. But uh-huh. I mean, you. You, it's not just jujitsu or any or MMA even. I mean, we got we got schools like that that I'm not going to mention any names, but you know, I've got I've been there. You know, that are teaching kids right now and getting their egos up high. You know, giving them a black belt at nine, ten years mm-hmm. old, making them think that there's some big badass. Yeah. Well, it's those it's those kids that grow up to be that fucktard that you were just talking about. I mean, they're they're growing up thinking I'm a, I'm so awesome. I got my black belt when I was 10 and that's all I need. Dude, you did a kata. That's, that's, I mean, no, no. It's literally in like the school that I'm referring to doesn't even require katas or anything like that anymore. All it is, is they do combinations and they do the Muay Thai hop. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> now, I will, I will say this, though. There are some traditional schools out there that, like the ones I came from, um, he started, the guy who owns the schools, he actually brought people in to, uh, like, he had a Muay Thai program. And he taught basics and it was great and had, like, right. have keto and all this other stuff. But, you know, it's a lot of these bullshit schools, like you said. They're just like, well, your check cleared. Here's your black belt. Good job. Yep. Can you do? I mean, the school... Can, the school I'm talking about literally hands out be- belts every two months. Wow, these, that's bad, man. Two every t- literally. Two months, really? Well, well to the day every two months they get a belt. I will defend this as in for the styles. Oh, excuse me, had some coffee earlier. For the styles, <laughs> like that type of progression is normal, right? It's not uncommon to get your black belt in five to six years. If you know what you're doing. If you know what you're doing, but right. Yeah. If if a kid comes to one class every six weeks and then two months later. Oh, hell no. That's that's way different. Belt, way different. That's this school. I mean, you literally get a belt based off of your payment. As really? long as the payment goes through, you get your belt. I know this 100% for a fact because my child was in that school. Shit. I'll tell, oh, you, man. I'll tell you what, though. Uh, I've been doing it all wrong. I just pay to get promoted. Is what you're telling yeah, me? that's it. That's all you got to Shit. Well, the black belt test at school is you have to run a mile, in, depending on your age, at between eight and nine minutes. What? You have to do 60 kicks and 60 knees each two minutes apiece. Oh that, my goodness! I swear, I swear to you, that is the black belt testing thing that you have to go through. <laughs> and Dude. after you get your black belt, your prize is a bow staff. I could probably eat a Big Mac, super size Big Mac, and then do that, and then get my black belt. Dude, my, wow! This is my this foot's is all fucked up, teacher, and I could probably do that. <laughs> this is from a teacher that is a quote unquote eighth degree black belt in taekwondo sweet wow you're gonna have to tell me after this because i actually might know who you're talking about well the (laughs) first three belts the first three belts he teaches taekwondo the next three belts he teaches muay thai the next three belts he teaches uh jujitsu kali and you know some some other stuff that doesn't make any sense but None of it is a roundabout. There is no forms. You know, Taekwondo is all about forms. Am I right? Yeah, absolutely. Uh-huh. If you do, if I you fuck it up, you, you, I was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. I remember that from when I was a kid. You know, Taekwondo is all about these forms, correct movements, blocks, all that stuff. They go through the six basic blocks in the Taekwondo and the basic punches and front kicks. That's it. That's Damn. the Taekwondo. From an, this is from a Taekwondo school, mind you. Yeah. That's all it's supposed to be. And this is how, and these kids 
parents pay this guy $150 a month what? to do this. Wow. Oh, Lord. If it's quality, <laughs> I get it. That, not so much. Like, <laughs> like I bet you they when it, wait, they go inside the gym, they're like, wow, this gym's really nice. I'm, wait, I'm so my six, money away. <laughs> 60 kicks and 60 knees in two minutes. Yes. And this is also, he, he's teaching jiu-jitsu. He's a blue belt. Um, uh <laughs> A Hoist Gracie blue belt. Oh, um, god damn it. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> and he, um, he has this, this whole program. You are not allowed to go to any other school and train, uh, whether you're in the jiu-jitsu program or any other program that he has, and you're not allowed to compete. What? Yep. In jiu-jitsu or any sort of karate competition. Wow. I think Hoyt needs to go down there and kick that dude right in his face. Yeah, dude. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. black belt That's tests. That's where my lineage started. <laughs> Your turn. Oh, shit. <laughs> Damn, dude. You know, like, I wish there would be, like, more difficult black belt tests because, like, what is it that Eddie Bravo does? Is like, you have to, like, pass my guard or you have to get so many transitions. I think you have to get, like, five transitions on him and then you'll get your black belt from him i think it's a whole lot more than that yeah i I, i've i've heard some stuff about eddie bravo's black belt testing that will blow you away oh really just yeah it's not just passing the guard this Uh is like a 60 minute roll oh shit wow well passing the guard might be getting another belt then before black belt so man i don't know crazy in that 60 minutes you have to successfully pull off a certain number of techniques and other other things i don't know the details of it that's just what i was told i got a friend of mine that's uh, part of the 10th planet system but uh i i don't think what you were told was, was true at all yeah well i'm somebody from a pastor 10th planet El Paso mentioned that to me yeah, yeah it so may I mean, be i don't know well but it's not black belt his black belt test is very rigorous jesus Nothing 60 wrong minutes with that. hell no right. That's how you get good. That's how All you right. get legit. So what do you got for the BJJ one, Matt? The would, the would you rather? Bet. Or the uh, current event. I know we spent a good 20 minutes on this last one. but Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was the BJJ one we were talking about. Just mm-hmm. grappling in general. Oh, only jiu-jitsu. What an a-hole. No, uh, <laughs> no uh, worldwide current event you want to talk about? Uh, man, not really, dude. Jesus I mean, Christ. what do we? Not, oh, hey, what hey, do we? Hey, what do we not hey, pay hey, you for, though? Hey, hey, you, I, I look up events and stuff, dude. And it's nothing but political stuff, so I can't do any of that stuff. <laughs> yeah, I don't really give two shits about Hillary Clinton and uh, <laughs> Donald Fuck Trump, to be honest. Yeah, they have to like if they're gonna fight in an MMA fight, then yes, the winner will be become Ooh, president. That but... would be awesome. Right? That would be awesome. <laughs> the, the only, the only like real political. If I was. If I could call it, if I want like the political power team, I want Arnold Schwarzenegger, right? <laughs> president. I want Carl Weathers as vice president. I want Jesse the Body Ventura as the, uh, uh, what is it? The uh, Secretary of State. Dude, why don't you want Carl Weathers to be president in general? Dude, he's Apollo Creed. Action well, Jackson. Well, he's, so you got to think of it like, um, like Rocky. You know, he played the lead for a while, but now it's somebody else's turn. He's that guy that's going to be there and have your back. So you need that guy as your vice president. Arnold's Damn, the leader. That's true. If, if I could pick, uh, I think I'm pretty sure Bing Reams has passed away though. has me. That was, uh, <laughs> that was Michael Clark Duncan who died. Okay. So I want Bing Reams as president and Gary Coleman as vice president. <laughs> Gary Coleman. Damn. That would be pretty awesome. Actually. <laughs> That All right, Matt, is... your turn. Fucking <laughs> well, you know what, guys? He's a little old, but Adam West. Oh, you just want to be like a... I you want just want to be like West. Family Guy. That's what you want. Adam West. Oh shit, that's right. He's married Family Guy. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> For me, although in all fairness, my uh, my political choices are pretty much I just wanted to kind of follow uh Predator. So I'm sure we could shoehorn all the other guys from Predator. <laughs> Into the uh, different like uh, cabinet or like members of the cabinet, so yeah. you, know, you can have like Bill Duke as the Secretary of Defense, just talking about <laughs> bleeding people real quiet, leaving them there. You know, like that's what I'd want. That's a, <laughs> that's the pred- the Predator political party. That's pretty good uh, alliteration there, I believe, is what it's called. 
I'm not very good at English, but the predator I'll work on that meme for you, Rob. The predator political party, and uh, if it bleeds, they can kill it. That's ooh, yeah, there you go. great, great campaign right there. there you go. Hey, Arnold, if you probably don't listen to this, but you need to, you get your campaign manager right here. Just I'll tag him in it on Facebook. It'd be fun. <laughs> Outstanding. Hell yeah. All right, Matt. So we got for our BJJ. Would you rather before we wrap up this show? So I'm very sorry about this, but this is a choice of disgrace and honor. Okay, guys. All right. Since we were talking right. about black belts, so I just want to see what position you'd rather take. Horrible position you'd rather take. Okay, ready? Yeah, let's yep. let's do it. All right. Would you rather be a Brazilian jiu-jitsu instructor who gets discovered and exploited that he is not a real black belt and he is a practically a fraud for lying to his students? Oh, so you're talking like 2002, and- uh, <laughs> like USA? I'm sorry, go ahead. <laughs> Hold on. Hold on. Oh, damn it. Okay. And now the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community knows of you and starts shunning you for being a fraud and black and a fake black belt instructor like like dude your your name is out there for being a liar and a fake black belt or right. would you rather be one of the best bjj competitors in the world you're practically the best let's just say but you get popped for steroids and this ruins your legacy because you once quoted that peds are for the mentally weak and i'll never take steroids Ooh. I was kind of I was I'm I'm glad it went this way because I was getting ready to say you're just recycling the same shit over and over again and just putting a little different spin on it. But uh, oh no, <laughs> they're they're different. <laughs> Would you rather uh, wrestle a hot girl with herpes or a uh, ugly guy with herpes? <laughs> hey, that was the first one. And that I was would definitely it was... take the hot girl with herpes. Why not? Well, yeah, man. If you're gonna get it, might as well. But might as well. But um. All right, uh, all right. Let's stop living in the past. All right, <laughs> dude. That's that's my, that's all my life is is living in the past. <laughs> I'm kidding. All right, so. Oh man! So either I'm a fake black belt or I'm a good competitor with steroids. Fuck. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good one. Take your poison. <laughs> Jesus. Uh, I pick the good good competitor with steroids because you can get clean. You can't ruin. You can't fix something that is. You know, look at that guy. I'm, that guy that got busted is a fake black belt that's sitting in the MMA cage. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he probably killed himself somewhere. No, oh, Jesus Christ! <laughs> oh, that guy at the UFC gym. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, so my whole thing is, it'd be tough because, like, the steroids would be the easy way out for me. I think because let's look at a couple of people who've been busted for steroids and where they're at now. Uh, Josh Barnett, right? Mm-hmm. One of the greatest catch wrestling heavyweights of all time been busted for steroids a few times and, oh yeah and yet nobody gives a shit anymore they're like uh we'll see if he passes right um yeah. who else i mean even tim sylvia like got busted for steroids at one point so it's kind of the same I'm thing i'm pretty like, sure the list would be shorter if we said who didn't yeah who has not <laughs> been busted for steroids yeah yeah like that's something i believe what just based on people training and competing, it's something easy to bounce back from. It may be possible to bounce back from being a fake black belt, but here's the deal. Yeah, if if you tr- go and actually really earn it after that. Exactly. Yeah, but you're a fraud in the Brazilian jiu-jitsu community too. So, I mean, your your reputation is just, like Jonathan said, you're like that guy in sitting in the cage. <laughs> yeah. So, so, so the, uh, the, the other, like, turn, you got to think of the turnaround on this though. So... You know, I pop hot for steroids. I get banned for a year, right? I get busted as a fraud in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu for not having a black belt. We'll say worst case scenario, I'm a white belt. I got, I need to work 12 years unless I'm a prodigy somehow and get it in five. So no matter what, it's a longer time to bounce back than getting popped for steroids. So Yeah, that's true. Mm, yeah. No, yeah, that's true. Yeah. Huh. However, I don't know. Like, we can look at what happened to Kevin Randleman not too long true. ago. I mean, right. I, I'm gr- one of the best competitors of all time, and they attribute his uh, yeah, man. They attribute his steroid use to him uh, to his heart failure. So 
that sucks really bad. So I'd, yeah, I'd almost rather be guaranteed I could be around a little bit longer than you know live that fame real quick, and then yeah. But that's just me. I see that point. Yeah, that's true. You don't have Freaking to agree that... with me, damn it. Fuck. Hey, I, hey, I disagree hey, hey. with I me. Still stand, I still stand with my previous part. You know, even though my nuts would be small, I'd still be able to pull back from it. Yeah, yeah man. Well, small watermelon nuts seeds. and a lot of titles. That's pretty, that's pretty awesome. <laughs> Say what you will about the fact whether or not I punch some shit in my arm, but look at all the metal on the wall. Fuck you. You do it. <laughs> Hell yeah. I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you and, and everybody else who doubted me. Yeah. And your um, little dog, I, too. Yeah, exactly. Did I ever tell you the story of me at Planet Fitness? I was paid 30 bucks to shoot a guy up. What? Yeah. By shoot him up, you mean? Yeah, down shoot him up in the what? No, no, no. Shoot him <laughs> up on the leg. Shoot him up on the leg. Thank God. Like I was like, when he told me, he's like, hey, man, can you shoot me up? And right away, I thought, oh, shit, you really? So, so you like, so you like get alcohol swabs out, and then he just, you know, you have your back turned, you turn back, and his, and his dick's hanging uh, out from his shorts. You're like, fucking, I was in my lab coat. Okay, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking turned around right away, turned back around. I had a white lab coat, and I yep. was like, all right, let's do this. And he's like, no, but it was, it he was, was like, oh, weird. I was confused. I, I meant shoot up, as in like you wanna, you want things to get real strange in here. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I maybe you know, go no, ahead, no, go no. Ahead. It's it's crazy. Like he showed me his shot, and I was like, "Oh my god, really? This guy really wants me to shoot him up with some juice? Holy shit!" And uh, I was like, "Okay." I was like, uh, "I hope it's on the leg because I'm not putting it in your ass." <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, yeah, it's in the leg." I was like, "Okay, cool. Leg or shoulder? That's fine." <laughs> and I just did it real quick. Fucking slapped his leg. See if I can find some pressure. And whoop, shot him up. We should uh, well, on that note. Yeah, like it's it's fucking crazy. I can't yeah, believe like this happened a while ago. That's pretty like, awesome. You we were uh, talking. you admitted to uh, committing a crime on the podcast. So Matt Miranda can good. be found on Phoenix, Arizona, right now. So <laughs> hey, get him. No, I'm joking. I'm joking. There's no, no but evidence. It was like crazy. Can't like, prove he's a thing. A, like I don't know like why he would ask me though. I'm like, what the fuck, man? Like, what really? Probably because you were the smallest one in the gym. Yeah, he'd probably kill you if you if you ever told anybody <laughs> about it. No, man. There's like guys He's that probably... I'm like pretty bigger than there, and then there's I'm not like huge, but I'm not small. But I'm he just, just I guess I don't know why he picked me out. I'm like, what the fuck? Okay. I'm, I'm hey man. I'm just saying he probably is gonna kill you for telling us this. Did you nah. at least get his name? Yeah. He don't speak. Don't, don't, Randy. Randy. God <laughs> damn it, man. Don't fucking say his name. I, he's going to find me, too. So like, I, it's going to be 3 o'clock in the morning here. I'm just going to hear a knock on the door. Hey, man, you got that podcast? Uh, Yeah, how'd you get here? Oh, uh, you guys talking about me doing steroids. And he's going to have to, like, turn sideways to walk in the, into the apartment. And <laughs> If I run in a circle, I think I might be safe. So... We at the Big Jiu-Jitsu <laughs> so do not support any decision made by our retard intern, Matt Miranda, by shooting people up. <laughs> oh, you know you uh, did, you know this is going in the description of the of the episode, right? Oh yeah, oh, that's fine. <laughs> but I mean, that's I just thought that was a funny story to share. <laughs> that's a pretty good one. All right, I'm so I'm not even ashamed. I was like, oh, okay, fine, fuck it, thirty dollars, why not? I need to pay gas in my car. <laughs> <laughs> oh Jesus! All right, so on that note, we're gonna call it the sh- we're gonna call it a show for this time because that is th- nothing more can be said this week, really. Yeah, that's. Uh, I think we pretty much covered everything, including cat chat. Yep. So Matt and Jonathan, thanks for being on the show again today. As usual, it's a good time, ladies and gentlemen. Absolutely. Yeah, no worries, ladies and gentlemen. This has been the Big Jiu Jitsu Show, member of the Pod Bros Podcast Network. Go to podbros.com, find some more shows to listen to. Go to bigjujitsu.com, buy some of our shit, help us run this podcast. And uh, don't forget to follow us on Facebook, facebook.com slash bigjujitsu, Instagram, Twitter. And for Christ's sakes, please give us a review on iTunes. That's how we're going to keep it going. That's how people are going to find out about us. Uh, We might even start doing a drawing for iTunes reviews. So we only got five, six, I believe. And, uh, one is one star, and I can only imagine which individual uh, <laughs> gave us a one star rating, Jonathan, if you know who that might be. I have no idea. No, nah, you probably do. I'll tell you after this. So, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, I got, I got, hang on. I got to give a shout out. Um, okay. 
everybody get on Facebook, search on search the Head Nod Squad. Um, at least shoot on there and hi, like them on there. That way, it's a it's a group that's trying to help research blood cancer. Uh, it also supports jiu-jitsu fighters and MMA fighters and uh, with names such as Ezra Lennon, Kyle Watson, and the new prodigy coming up, uh, Andrew Wilty. Um, you're going to see the, see his name. He's going to be somebody big very, very soon. So at least hop on their page and jump on that bandwagon before everything blows up. Yeah, maybe they'll uh, even shoot some podcast something like a like a hoodie. Who knows? That's right. All right. Well, ladies, yeah, it could. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for listening, and we'll catch you guys next week. Take it easy, Vic, guys.